I just finished filming the first tutorial for Lightroom. It finally happened. You guys asked so many times for me to do a tutorial. You guys were sick of doing lives with me because they didn't save and you guys couldn't go and see them or some of you missed them. So now there is a tutorial that you can see on YouTube and you can play it as many times as you want. I'm super excited. I was really nervous to film the first one and once I got started I just couldn't stop doing them so now I'm working on I think the third one. Um, so this is just a, um, I'm so excited I can't breathe. Uh, this is the kind of a start to finish workflow. Um, how to import, how to edit, how to export. Um, I wanted to cover kind of the basics and show you what all the sliders and buttons do. Um, I am by no means a extreme expert, I just have fallen in love with Lightroom and seeing how everything works and how photos can be edited. Um, so please be kind with your comments, um, leave me any feedback or questions or ideas for more videos you want to see. I already have a couple of ideas, but I would love to hear from you guys what you want to see from me. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoy it. And don't forget to subscribe and uh, also follow me on Instagram because that's where I post all of my stuff. Bye guys. Enjoy. Hey everybody and welcome to my first ever YouTube tutorial. Uh, today I thought it would be a good start to, of course, start with the basics of Lightroom. I know that some of you have been requesting, um, you know, how to use Lightroom. I know that a lot of you have downloaded it, but you're not really sure how to use it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go through today is what all the buttons do, where to find your presets, um, what, all the, what all these toggles do. Um, there's a lot of information in Lightroom, so strap yourselves in and let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head up to the top here to library and you're going to click on import. Import is obviously where you will find all of your photos. Everything for me is saved on a hard drive. Um, so here you would, let's say, click on these. <clears throat> Bali 2017, um, Azul Beach Club. Uh, you can double click on the photo. Um, I'm just gonna go back here on the bit of a bottom left situation here. Um, you can either do the grid or you can do uh, one photo at a time. So what I like to do is I uncheck all of them and then I go to the single view and I just use the right and left keys to go through the photos. And when I find a photo I like, I just click on include and import and I continue going. So once I've found all the ones that I've liked, you can see the one that we selected is up here. I go to the right hand side and I always build a smart preview. Now I didn't used to always do this, but um, apparently the smart preview builds a preview that you can edit without the hard drive being plugged in. Um, this is super key if you're traveling and you don't want to keep plugging and unplugging your hard drives and you just want to you know, play with, um, play with your, your photos and edit them. Um, so I've, I've just started building these and I'm quite enjoying it. So here we go, we click import and at the top it's, uh, it's importing the photo. Okay, great, and now we're gonna go to the develop tab. So right now I am in uh, previously imported on the bottom here, so I am just gonna click that and I'm gonna go to all photos because I don't necessarily wanna be editing this photo at the moment. I'm gonna go find that photo of me in the egg chair and show you how I edited that one. This one I had recently posted on Instagram. I think it's probably um, in the last week or so I probably posted it. Um, it is one of my most liked photos on Instagram, which is so crazy, over 10,000 likes. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I edited this um, by teaching you where everything is. So I'm gonna click the reset button here on the bottom left. We're gonna reset the photo. Um, I do like having a before and after left and right, which is down here. So you have the single view and you have the left and right. So I like to keep this just so I can see the difference in color. And if I am, if I am really off in color, I kind of like to, to keep the colors as natural as possible. But sometimes I kind of go off. I kind of go off and do my own thing. 
but I still like the before and after. So over here on the top, you have the navigator, uh, called the navigator square, but basically what it does, and right now I think my computer is just lagging, but um, when you hover over these, over these presets, so these are all the presets that I've custom made over, um, over the last year, um, it will give you a small preview here, and I don't know why it's not working, which is making me sad, but anyway, so we are going to choose, which one was it? Is it malleables? Yes. Okay. So already this is giving me the vibe that I want. I want this like warm feel to it. Um, usually the first thing I do is I go to the top left corner here on the right hand side and I click on the crop tool. Um, the aspects in Instagram is max eight by 10. So that's what I'm going to choose here today. I'm going to place that and click done. If the photo was a bit, uh, uh, was it, um, if the photo wasn't angled properly, then you can come down to this angle tool and you can rotate it in whichever direction. So you can make sure it was straight. Okay, we're gonna click done. And here we go. So the white balance, I usually keep at as shot within the camera. Um, it depends, sometimes the white balance is not, always, um, is not always set properly in the camera. So I will often change this to whatever vibe I really want. Um, I'm just finding right now it's there's a lot of magenta in this in this uh, photo so I'm just gonna bring up the greens a little bit and already that looks a lot better and I'm just gonna make it a little bit warmer perfect scrolling down here I'm gonna keep the exposure the same and the contrast the same the highlights I like to personally keep low that's a personal preference um, the shadows whites and blacks I find look great in this photo for now. For anyone who does not know what all of these things control, the highlights are the brightness, the bright parts in this photo. So just to give you an idea and show you what that's like, the shadows are obviously the darker, photo, the darker parts of this photo. So I'm going to bring that way up because that's what I love. And then the whites is obviously everything that's white within the photo. So we're going to keep that at around there. And the blacks, the blacks. So I like to keep that somewhat elevated for this photo anyways. Perfect. All right. So clarity um, really adds a lot of detail or blur to your photo. So this is like, I call it the dreamy. Uh, the dreamy tab because the lower you get in clarity the more it creates this like blurred dreamy vibe and then the higher you get the more detailed it gets so I like to be somewhere in the middle um, I don't like too detailed and I don't like too dreamy so depending on the photo I'll kind of gauge what I want but for this one I kind of like it with a bit more detail um, the great thing about vibrance is that it really controls um, not over exposing and saturation with your skin tones, which is awesome. So even if I elevate it like this, it is for sure getting more saturated, but it's nothing like what the saturation tab does. It is like really extreme. Um, so vibrance does bring up your colors, but to a very controlled and almost realistic extent. So we're actually going to keep those right around there. Um, anytime you need to undo anything, you I have a Mac, so you can press uh, Command Z, and it'll just undo whatever you've just done. So I'm just gonna go back a couple of spaces and see what I've changed. So I changed the clarity. The vibrance was at plus 25, so we'll leave it at that. Here is your um, hue, saturation, and luminance uh, area. Um, the tone curve, I will probably get into in a different video. There's a lot to understand here. Um, so we'll just pass that for now. So hue saturation and luminance. So obviously the hue is, um, is going to change the, 
the colors. So in terms of red, you can see it's gonna go more pink and more orange. Um, so you can play around with those um, whichever way you like, or you can use this little toggle here. You can click that and you can come into the photo and drag it up or down and it'll change the colors within that photo. So I'm just gonna back up here because I do like the coloring in this photo. Um, we're going to scroll down to saturation, um, which obviously, obviously controls how, um, how, um, how saturated a specific color is. And then luminance is the brightness of a color. So for oranges, let's say I can make them super dark or I can make them a lot brighter. So I, I'm for this photo anyways, I'm gonna keep them somewhere around here, I think. Perfect. Um, I don't always like this long list. I often like it more controlled. So I just click on color and it'll give it to me by color. So if I know that my, that my oranges need to be like less saturated, I'll just click on the oranges and come deal with that here. All right, split toning, one of my favorites in Lightroom. So essentially split toning is controlling the tint in your highlight and your shadows. So your highlights, again, are the brighter parts of your photo and the shadows are the darker parts. So I like to always keep my highlights in a cooler tint and my shadows in a warmer tint. Um, right now the colors are in a, I would say a blue, a blue purplish tone. Um, and I like, to, I like to bring that color all the way up just so I can see what color I'm choosing. So I'm gonna pick the blue and then I'm going to desaturate it to wherever, to wherever I want. And the same with the shadows. So I'm gonna come in here and say I want like a reddish orange color in those and then desaturate them. <clears throat> so for this one, I'm looking for a bit of a warmer, a bit of a warmer photo. So I'm gonna bring those up a little bit. And the balance just controls how much of each is going into your photo. So I usually like to keep it in the middle and then adjust from there. But already I'm really liking the way this looks. All right, so here you have the details tab. So we're gonna open that up and here you can play with how much the picture is sharpened. Um, I like to keep mine maybe in the 20s. And then noise reduction is uh, control, controlling the amount of noise, um, also known as grain, um, in your photo. So I sometimes, for a darker photo, like to bring this up a little bit, even just to 10, and it kind of smooths out the photo. So we're going to come down here to lens correction. And I don't always lens correct my photos just because I sometimes like the, the vibe that it gives. Um, but just to show you, if I enable the lens correction, it'll tell me here, it, it already knows that I'm using a Canon and what lens I have. Um, but sometimes if, let's say I, I took a drone picture, sometimes I do need to change that. So I can come here and say like DJI and, uh, and then it can adjust the photo like that. Um, but for this one, I do like that it gives it a vignette around the photo. And so we're gonna keep it that way. So that's it for lens correction. Um, effects, here's where you can put um, a higher vignette if you want to, um, or you can um, add some more grain to the photo if you like. <clears throat> for this one, I'm just gonna keep it as is. I don't really touch the camera calibration. That always kind of stays the same. All right, that's about it. I'm just going to come up here and play with the temperature a little bit because I really do want that extreme, very extreme warmth. So here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull up the before and after so you guys can see. But yeah, I do really like that. Okay, I think we're good. If you just wanted to do a singular uh, photo and you wanted to see the before and after, you just press the backslash button and it'll give you a before and after. Okay, just before I let you guys go, I'm gonna show you what these other buttons control. So we did, we covered the uh, crop tool. Um, this is the spot removal tool. 
So let's say I wanted to remove, I remove in this photo, this little this little light thing here on the top. So I would go and click this, and then Lightroom tries to find a match in the photo that would be best suited. So sometimes it gets it, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, you kind of move it around to find the best position. Click done, and it takes it out. I mean, this is a very shoddy job, but um, if you take some time, you can definitely take it out, and no one would know. Uh, this is Red Eye. I never really touch red eye. Um, I never really have a problem with it. This is the gradient tool, which is also super cool and something I'll cover in another tutorial. Um, it's great for landscape and great for sunset, so stay tuned for that. And this is the, I think it's a radial filter. Yeah, radial filter. So this is great if you just want to focus on one particular part of this photo. Let's say you're like, okay, I feel like I am pretty well exposed, um, but I just want to touch everything around me. I want to bring out everything a little bit brighter. So you would put the radial filter around the human, which would be me, and then you would expose and use these sliders to control everything outside of that circle. Um, you can also invert the mask. Let's say you wanted to control everything within the circle. So you can just click that button and that's what it'll do. Um, so for now, we'll just keep it this way. And then this is another great tool. It's called, I call it the brush tool, but it is the adjustment brush. And essentially it's exactly what it, uh, exactly what it says. Um, you brush out, um, any particular part. So let's say I wanted to make myself more, um, more sharpened so I can paint myself and then come down here to sharpness and bring that up. And there we go. And there are tons of options. You can control the temperature, the whites, the blacks, the shadows. Um, these I all received because of the Visco packs I purchased, I'm pretty sure. Um, so you control anything from, you know, you can smooth the skin, um, you can enhance the iris, and this little arrow here um, controls uh, how much how much detail you uh, really want to play with. Um, I usually leave it open, uh, but you can close it and just you know pick um, pick one aspect to change and then move your toggle around if you want to. And there we go. The next step is to export. So I am going to right click on this photo and I'm going to say export. I'm gonna click on export and I'm gonna write chill house tutorial. Ooh, I can't write today. Uh, so it's already exporting to my desktop in the folder called uh, Lightroom, which is fine. Um, I'm going to name it chill house tutorial and I'm going to export in JPEG. Um, you can export in whichever one you like, but for um, Instagram, I always export in JPEG and I export in Adobe RGB. The quality I leave to 100 and that is it, export. And on the top left, you'll see it exporting. And I'm just going to minimize this for a second. That's me with my bananas. I'm going to double click Lightroom and there we go. That is our photo. After that, I usually just click on this button and I airdrop directly to my phone and post to Instagram. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys have learned at least a little something more about Lightroom and where all these buttons are. Any videos you'd like to see me create, just leave me a comment on the bottom. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I will leave the link to my Instagram below because that's where I post all of my photos. Thank you so much for joining and I will see you guys next time. Bye.